Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Baxter and I'm a developer advocate at IBM for Bluemix. And today I'd like to talk to you about using a third-party logging service to capture the logs for the applications you've deployed to Bluemix. Now there's a number of reasons why you might want to use a logging service. The first one being that um, using the CF logs command will only get you so much information about your logs. You can either tail your logs uh, and you can see a snapshot of your logs, but you can't go back in time and do any kind of analysis on your logs or search through older logs that are maybe you know, one, two, three days older. The other reason uh, why you might want to use a, a third-party logging service or any kind of logging service uh, is because um, as soon as your application restarts, uh, your logs are lost. Right? Logs are stored in the file system and the file system is uh, temporary in the case of Bluemix. Um, it's deleted every time the application restarts and restages. So um, as soon as a, a restart happens, uh, your logs are lost, and what's in those logs might be very important. And restarts might happen uh, quite often uh, in a system that is uh, practicing continuous integration and continuous delivery. It might happen multiple times a day, for example. So um, uh, this is a, a very big concern, especially when you want to um, keep track of, your, of what's going on in your log files. So a logging service is critical to, to making that happen. Now you can use the uh, internal uh, or the, the logging service provided by Bluemix called Monitoring and, and Analytics, but that will only keep your logs for 24 hours and only works with Liberty or Node applications. So if you're using something other than Liberty or Node or you want to see uh, keep logging information that that's, uh, goes beyond 24 hours, then you want to look into using a third-party logging service. So I'm going to, uh, to demonstrate the concept of using a third-party logging service, I'm going to use this very simple application that I have here. Uh, you can see that at this uh, hello uh, endpoint in our application, we will do uh, uh, a couple, uh, or I'll put a couple of logging messages, one that's using system, system.out and then the others that are using loggers, the, the Java logger that logs information at different uh, log levels. So this application uh, I have is already deployed to Bluemix. So if we look in Bluemix here, we see that it is already deployed. Uh, but how do we go about connecting a, a, a logging service, a third-party logging service to uh, Bluemix or to this application in Bluemix? Um, so you can choose from any number of logging services, third-party logging services that are out there, um, as long as they support the syslog protocol. Um, the one we're going to be using in today's demonstration is called Paper Trail. So if you Google for Paper Trail, uh, this will be the first result you'll see. Um, you can create an account on Paper Trail for free, and you can connect uh, 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 many different systems to Paper Trail uh, in order to track your logs, um, all for free up until I think they only keep logs for I think seven days or something. And if you need logs to be kept longer than that, then um, you'll have to uh, create a pay account. But for free, you can do quite a quite a bit. Um, but to get started uh, connecting our application to Paper Trail, we're just going to click on Add System up top here. And um, because we want to use Syslog um, and the Syslog protocol, we need to click on Alternatives here, right below. And it's going to ask you to choose your situation. Um, and you don't see one here for Bluemix, but uh, in this case we can actually choose that we are using Heroku, even though actually we're not using Heroku at all. Um, but it happens to be that Heroku and um, Bluemix or Cloud Foundry um, uh, capture logs in the same way or output logs in the same way. Um, so we can say that we're using Heroku even though we're not and we just need to give this thing a name so we'll call it Logs Demo and we'll click Save. That's all we really need to do from the paper trail side. You'll see that um, paper trail gives us a, a a domain and port where our logs are going to be or needs to be sent to. So we need to tell Bluemix about this domain and port. So how do we do that? Well, um, we have to create some type of service that our application can bind to that tells our app about this domain and port. And it's actually pretty simple to do. We need to create a user provided service. So we're going to jump over into our command line here. And we're going to execute a command to create a user provided service. So to create a user provided service, we you use the CF cups command. Um, and uh, the first parameter to this command needs to be uh, the name of the service uh, that you want to create. So we're going to call it paper trail in our case. Then you specify dash L to indicate that this is going to be a syslog service. 
Um, and then the uh, syslog URL always starts with syslog colon slash slash. And then uh, we just need to copy our domain import that was provided by Paper Trail here. So we'll copy this domain import and we will paste it in here. And then uh, press enter and that will create our user provided service. So you can see we were able to create that service. Now let's go back to Bluemix here in our application. And we're going to bind a service. And when this dialog comes up, there should be, uh, we should be able to see our paper trail service uh, listed here in dialog along with the other services that we have created uh, in our account. So we see here is our paper trail service. It is a user provided service. So let's select that one and click add. And Bluemix will now tell us that our application needs to be restaged. So click OK to that and wait for Bluemix to finish restaging the application. Once your application has finished restaging, go back to Paper Trail and refresh the page here. And here we can see we are now brought to our uh, logging console. And we can see all the output from our logs. Actually, this is just from our, our staging uh, that just occurred uh, right here to our console. Uh, so let's go ahead and refresh or hit that uh, hello uh, endpoint in our application here to cause those couple of logging messages we had in the code to be printed out to the logs. So we'll go ahead and refresh the page. When we come back here, we can see that there's new messages down at the bottom. Uh, so this updates live as new logs come in, which is really cool. Uh, so we can see here's our system not out, here's our info message, here's our warning message, and here's our severe message. Uh, you can do things, you can, you can search your logs as well. Um, so you can search for things like, uh, you know, warnings, right? So if I want to find any strings that have warnings there, we see warning um, or, or um, error, right? So there might be common things you might want to search for in your logs, and we can see that. And you can save searches, which is really nice. But like I said, the, the coolest thing is um, um, the ability to archive your logs and, and look over a longer period of time. So you can always download archives uh, for logs that you might have over uh, a, a longer period of time. Or you can even connect this up to an S3 bucket in, in Amazon and have your logs stored there. So there's many different options for persisting your logs. Um, but it is, is uh, essentially a, a must-have uh, type of service when you have a production application running in Bluemix. Um, you, you need to keep track of your logs. There's going to be some situation where you may want to go look at logs over a certain period of time, and that might be over a week or a month or, or whatever, so you need to be, have those, that persistent storage of your logs. Um, so I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.